In today's episode, I'm going to share with you what I share with my team so that I give us and my business the best fighting chance of reaching our goals in 2024. Because if you don't share information with your team, you're going to be in a one man race. Hello and welcome to episode 254 of my TV. My name's Emma Mills and I help business owners go from that messy middle of being a solopreneur through to getting some help, leveraging their time, in turn and getting a team, a thriving, ambitious team around them. And team being the operative word, because that's what today's episode is about and how you get your team in on your 2024 goals. Because too, far too many business owners, they'll set their goals in January and they will be set with all of the information they have in their head about what they think is possible, how they're going to achieve it. And they don't for many different mindset reasons, share this with their team because they might think they don't want them to have too much information. They might sometimes think it's actually probably, I'm not sure if we're going to achieve it, so I don't want to commit it to my team. They might just think they don't want them having so much information. They might think they don't know what they're doing with the information, so what's the point of sharing it anyway? And my episodes at the beginning of this year are all about things that I don't just want us all to write goals in January. I want us to make changes on a weekly, monthly basis this year so that the things we're actually talking about now happen throughout the year. So today's episode is about what I share with my team to make sure we are all going down the same path. There is an, the most amazing quote by Brian Tracy, and I'm not one of those people that can recount like stories word for word and quotes and sayings and my ops manager Matt is bloody brilliant I say give him anything from any film story he's, rec he's recounting it and there are not many things I can do that with but there are a couple of quotes that really resonate and this one with Brian Tracy and he said that if you feel lonely at the top it is because you are doing it wrong and it's probably a bit painful for some business owners that because lots of people I think like to, you know, wear the heart on the sleeve, like have the badge of honor that, oh, it's so hard at the top, it's lonely. And don't get me wrong, I know it is because there are decisions that you make, there are, there's risk, there's responsibility that you shoulder. But if that's how you feel 100% of the time, it, it isn't meant to feel like that. Because actually, most of us, what we want to achieve in life, we're not achieving it just on our own. So for example, with my PA's plans for this year, which you know are around revenue, number of customers, customer happiness, like where we're going, I might set the course for that. But if, if I'm just doing it all on my own, well, I'm not because I need the 35 people that are currently in the business to deliver the service, to manage, to motivate, to track, to innovate, to, to do all of these other things. So why would any business owner just set the course of what they want to do? on their own and not share it with anyone. And so you don't have to feel lonely at the top. I mean, if you work on your own, then I know it's very different. It, there is just you. But outside of that, one, whether it's actually finding other business owners who can share with you like their problems, the challenges they face, things that they're dealing with, because actually, no matter whether your business is large or small, we all have the same problems. And so that's a really key part of not feeling lonely, like having a peer group around you going through similar challenges. But in your business itself, yeah, I have felt lonely for a long time in my business, say up to like 2019, but that was my own fault because I, I never fully shared lots of information with my team and one thing that really triggered me about this episode today is I shared with my team on Wednesday the 3rd of January we came in we had our back to work like set the course for the year meeting and in that meeting I shared with them the budget so I went like our revenue goals but also our budget and everything that made up behind that and there were parts of that they hadn't seen before and they all together in unison like this is a missing bit it makes so much sense like having the full information means that they can help they can innovate they can come up with ideas they can replace bits of software with other things like why you would keep maximum information to yourself is more more of a you issue or a mindset issue than the benefits of sharing it with your team. So I wanted to go through the things that I share with my team and I would encourage everybody to do, whether you have either two staff, three staff, like if you've got people working for you and you want them on the same journey as you, you want them to be doing the stuff that's moving you towards your goals, why would you not give them something, some information, some insight as to what makes that up and where we're going? So these are the things that I share with my team at my PA. So 
So revenue targets is number one that we always share. We've been sharing that for about three or four years now. And honestly, the impact since sharing it, and this started back in the summer of COVID 2020s when I first properly started sharing, the impact has been phenomenal. Like it just, they, your team can do so much more than you think they can. I know, I know you think you've got everything, but your team can do so much more when you give them the data to do it with. So our revenue targets, so that's across the 12 months, it's across the departments like call PA follow up, and it's also broken down into the number of customers we have at the starting point in January and then how many we want to gain each month and the addition with some attrition factored in of clients leaving. But that number of our starting point plus the rhythm of how many we want to gain, and don't be wrong, in our Michael department, we want to get 16 new clients every month now. Some months we might get 12, some months we might get 20, and the average out, but our average is we want 16 new a month. So that is what I share with my leadership team, but I share it with the whole business in our quarterly meeting. I, I, I do that every quarter, a Zoom to the whole team, and, and everybody is very aware of what our monthly target is in the departments and how many clients that equates to. And obviously, it's a whole other episode, but having that number of clients, I then drill down into a marketing plan, which is, well, how many leads do we need to get that many customers? You know, how many appointments, how many presentations, how many sales, like all that behind it, where am I gonna get my leads from? That's like the kind of level of detail on how we start to do this planning, but with the team, the revenue and how many customers make up that revenue. Number two is our budget targets on what we spend. Now, one of my biggest downfalls is that I overspend. I spend too much. I like shiny new things. I like new courses. I like new groups. I like new mentors. I like new bits of software. I like new stuff. And I always say, oh, well, I'm going to buy it because it's going to save us money or time or get us new customers or somewhere. But there comes a level where the budget has to be the budget. And so I share this with my team. So on Wednesday, we have an operational budget of all the things in there that are not wages. So this is like, you know, our rent, our marketing, our software, staff entertainment, staff passes, everything goes into this pot. And we have a spreadsheet that line items, all of the different categories in there, and then a tab behind the spreadsheet. So one tab will be advertising and marketing. And inside that is everything that we spend on that, like itemized in it, staff entertainment, all the things we have lined up in the year that we want to have money available to spend on for the team and so each tab has all the detail in it the telecoms all of our phone systems our number rentals our mobile phones that's all listed in there and for the first time ever actually this year I've got certain members of our leadership team have got responsibilities for different lines so like my ops manager is looking after telecommunications he's looking after our IT support budget and my PA Bex is looking after the staff entertainment budget God help us and so every so we've got people who are then looking after different parts of the budget but having that kind of operational number across so we've got our revenue of what we want to achieve and then we've got our operational budget behind it and obviously as our revenue number grows there are some things in here which have to grow with it whether it's you know getting new pcs to set up new stations for new members of the team or adding in extra phone numbers as we're adding new clients or you know or software licenses because our team's grown so we do this thinking behind it but having this set figure this set number that every month we don't want to spend above this amount because we want to protect our profits so having the team fully immersed into what that number is is already for me starting to create really good stuff so conversations are happening around wow I didn't realize we spent so much money on software generally I mean like our software bill is horrendous and one thing to like really get across in this is that you might shoulder the stress of paying bills and thinking to yourself and I've been there as well and you think well it's easy for them like they don't know how much all this costs they think I'm a millionaire when I'm not I'm just trying to like pay the bills and pay the wages but most of the time business owners teams just don't know the information and so when I for the very first time gave them this like real clarity on they were like, oh, well, I didn't realize this, this cause I didn't realize the rent was this much. Wow, that feels like dead money. Oh, okay, we need to stop using that software now. We don't, it's not even that useful, let's just get rid of it. And they were starting to have all these conversations around where they could potentially save money, where we might replace, say, 
two pieces of software with one piece of software. I mean, I've had some requests, I'm not going to say anything, I've had some requests from team members like, can we start doing this? Can we start buying that? Can we start? When they then have the budget in front of them, they can then say, well, these are either ridiculous requests or, well, okay, you might want to buy this new piece of software that's £200 a month, but you can see the impact it has to the business or like, well, where are we going to get that money from? What should we cancel instead to do it? And this was completely without my encouragement. It's not like I was encouraging the conversation once they saw the reality of how much all the different things cost in the different areas just to keep the doors open on the business they were having these most amazing conversations and the same thing could happen in your business if people start to understand well you know just for us to put the lights on just how much the rent costs and then having kind of some overview of it for us has been extremely positive and helpful and it started to give them a feeling of ownership of well I I can have an impact here. I might be able to replace that software or I might be able to come up with a better idea than why we currently spend money on this. Like they've now got the opportunity and, and these conversations are happening. So sharing the budget not only personally helps me not spend money because then I have to show it in front of the team. It's also helping my team get fully involved in how they can help in different ways, which it might be something that I could do, but I'm never gonna get around to it because it's low down on the to-do list, getting rid of a piece of software. But another member of my team might go, do you know what, on Friday, I'm gonna look at that and try and replace it and get it down or get it free or do something else with it. So sharing budget targets with your team, for me, has only had a beneficial effect and I would really encourage you to do the same thing. And number three, which I know you know is probably coming and some of you are gonna love it or hate it, is profit targets. And for the longest time, I was very much of the mindset, like I couldn't really get my head around, was it a good thing to share? Is it a bad thing to share? Like if you're making profit, I know most business owners' mindsets is, well, they're gonna think I'm a millionaire and I'm not a millionaire, I'm not rich. And then when you're not making profit, you don't want, I guess, the reality of that with your team. Like some people wouldn't want them to worry. But and, and I've been in so many masterminds and groups where the opinion has been completely split about how much you share with your team. And where I am ended up with that is that I will, th this is how I think about it. If I was a member of my team, I would be wanting to be working for an ambitious company, a company that shows profit, a company that wants to generate profit. And I make it really clear to our team that like all of the good stuff comes from profit. So all the things that get chatted about in normal businesses, like pay rises and fun things. And you know, I'm sure if any of you follow a bit of what we do, we try and make it fun and a little bar and drinks and, but all of these things only come from profit. And so when there are conversations around like when you actually do show the figures for real in terms of okay well we wanted to make profit and actually we broke even this month there is no profit for me it also makes some conversations so much easier whether it's like about pay rises or buying new things or like having that conversation of well you can see what we've just done for the last six months where are you intending that comes from like I want my team to have real ownership over my PA. Like this is a real long-term journey for us. I want them to have ownership over where we're going, what we're doing and their part in it. And like, these are real life conversations. You know, we're, we're not like funded by some kind of magical money tree in the sky. Like what I show them is what's happening. And so it also makes the conversations really easy when people are asking for things because you can just show them. And then similarly, when a business is making lots of profit, unless you're the kind of business owner who doesn't want your team to be part of that journey at all, you don't want them to share in the success, like, okay, I'm probably not talking to you, but as a business owner who, like, their team's a part of it, you want them to do well as while well, you do well, you want to pull them with you along it, then showing that profit has been a real eye-opener for me and in a, in a good way. Like I, there, there has been nothing from sharing profit figures that has been negative in my experience. So as lots of people might know, we watch my TV regularly, we grew very fast from COVID and that brought with it all these kinds of challenges. And I have made really clear to my team that over the past 18 months, we basically grew very quickly in revenue, but we also grew a massive pot of costs. We, we didn't, we weren't able to really, really manage that really well while we dealt with all of the growth. And so, you know, like efficiencies, wages, software, just everything just grew with it because it was easy just to do that to keep everything going. And so the last 12 months, my whole team know have been about, we've got this big pot of revenue, but we've got a big pot of cost as well. And we need to make this gap because in the gap is where all the good stuff happens. And I'm like super, super transparent with my team around that. And so we've done a lot of work on that in the past 12 months. And now this month and this year, 
is about like our watchword is profit we just want to be profit focused because we haven't been we've been kind of like trying to manage what we have and now we're like we're in a really good place and we want to focus on profit and i'm not afraid to talk to my team about that because who wouldn't want to work for a business and a business owner that's ambitious that wants to generate spare cash to do good stuff in the business to do good stuff out of the business like i have no issues with wanting to earn more and generate more because been in this 15 years now they all know my dedication to it the graft like from it we all want good stuff to come for me for them for all of us so sharing the profit figures and why would you not have something to celebrate with them even when we haven't hit profit figures and then we've been able to explain well we went over budget here that you know we spent way too much on salaries that month why have we been overstaffed like having those conversations then gets really really real with your team members so i don't think that sharing profit is in any way detrimental to you and it may be that you don't share it with the whole team maybe you share it with the core people around you that really like your right hand people that drive things forward maybe that's the right thing for you at the moment i share profit with the whole business every quarter to show where we're at where we're where we are or where we're not you know you'll be able to find your own way with it for you but if you if you keep all this information to yourself i think you have got a very low chance of going where you want to go So those are the three main numbers that I share with my management team, you know, people around me that get stuff done. And for you, that might be an assistant. It, maybe the leadership team is a strong word. It might be just the people around you that help you to get stuff done. And I share it with my whole team as well. And then alongside the three numbers, I have with my core team a project and we call it the planes to land because that's what we are doing. We're landing a plane one after the other. So, and these are the big rocks, the needle movers, the big projects that are going to mean we achieve our goals in the next 12 months. So it's not a task list, it's not a to-do list, it's not like, oh, submit the wages next week or upload an Instagram post, it's not like to-dos. They are big projects that need to happen. And the purpose of this project is so that us as a team all look at it and we know what each other's main goal is, like main priority. So if we could only work on one thing every day, this is the thing that we're working on. So for example, in our PA team, we know that this month this year sorry to achieve our goals we need to improve our pa onboarding process we need to get information out of our clients quicker we need to help them to to use the service more like we could do a better job of it like that is a big rock that our pa team manager abby has got on her list to get done my ops manager our follow-up department we're going to completely overhaul how we do things the software in them reporting to our clients so his big rock is follow-up team operationally getting that completely ready for a version two of our service my my big rock at the moment is i really want to get a podcast done and getting that in out into the world into a rhythm that is my big rock so if all we did was spend time on one thing per day it's these big things and we only focus on one at a time per person it's not like i would have three going on because we just focus on landing one but having this project might be the missing bit for you in knowing exactly what the key things are to get done and so it's not to-do list it's not task list it's like big projects that are either going to get more clients improve service improve customer happiness you know all the good stuff that that feeds into your goals so our plane to land projects are if you like our all hands projects of the big rocks like what's going on in it i would really recommend that with the people who get that stuff done with you and alongside you you have a project with it in and you might list all the stuff you'd love to do because we have that as well we have all this stuff we'd love to do but we know we can't do it all at once so we take each one thing at once work on it and we can we question each other like what's happening with that where's it up to when's it going to be done why is it behind and that in terms of getting stuff done implementing moving things forward is one of our biggest triggers like it's the thing that and there's no shying away from it you know they're updated we question each other on it that might just be one of the biggest things that will have the difference between you kind of repeating the same year that you repeated last year and the year before and the year before that not really getting stuff done and actually making some big strides forward so i share my three numbers we have our shared projects of what's really important and for me i would not be even dreaming of achieving our 2024 goals if i wasn't sharing this information with my team and I hope it gives you some food for thought to do the same with the people
people who are important to you in your business. I hope this helps you to get your head out of the dirt and into the clouds and I will see you next week. See you then. Bye bye. Thank you.